lies ahead for the FAA's Pilot Records Database, and what do some business aviation pilots need to do right now? From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for business aviation news. Earlier this year, the FAA established its Pilot Records Database for information about pilots flying for commercial air operations. Ultimately, the PRD will serve as an online repository for records from a pilot's current and former employers and the FAA. But how's that effort going so far? What will that entail? And to whom will that information be available? To answer those questions, I'm pleased to welcome Rob Reckert, Division Manager for AFS 600, the regulatory support division within the Office of Safety Standards within the FAA's Flight Standard Service. And also with us is Brian Kester, NBAA's Director of Flight Operations and Regulations. Brian, for anyone who may still be unfamiliar with today's subject, what is the PRD and where are we in its development? The Pilot Records Database is sort of an attempt to bring the Pilot Records Improvement Act into the modern era. So the Pilot Records Improvement Act is still a paper-based process whereby commercial air carriers are required to obtain records for training and checking, disciplinary records, hiring records of pilot candidates that, that they intend to hire and employ as a pilot. And they're expected to get records for the previous five years for any pilot candidate Right now, they have to request those records from previous employers, from the FAA, and from a national driving records database. This will digitize that process and make it so they go through this this single database to obtain those records when trying to hire a new candidate. This rule came about after an NPRM in spring of 2020. Once again, we'd like to thank all the NBA members who helped weigh in during that comment process. The initial proposal was maybe not quite as favorable for the Part 91 operators as it could have been. Fortunately, NBA members weighed in and their voice was heard by the FAA. And we'll again thank Rob and his team at the FAA for hearing those comments and hearing the voices of the NBA membership and making some changes in the final rule. The final rule came out in June of 2021. But the most important date in there was probably September 8th, and which was the first deadline for the new rule, which is contained in Part 111. So all eligible operators were required to register for the database by September 8th. Rob, who is required to register in the database? First thing, thanks to NBAA for helping support and and transition this message and this change to the industry around the pilot record database. The big thing that we're really trying to encourage everybody to sign up as soon as possible within the database. We purposely built a window between September 8th and December 7th. So reporting entities that had to report to PRD or a hiring air carrier that would have to access PRD after December 7th had a window to become familiar with the automation in the system and to work through any access issues that they may have. As far as who's required to report to PRD, the reporting entities are contained within Part 111. It includes Part 121 air carriers, the gamut of 135 operators. So regardless of whether they're a single pilot to a 10 or more, they will have to report records to the PRD. Air tour operators under 91147 will have to report. Public aircraft operators will have to report as well as certain corporate operators. Within the rule, we've defined those as operators with two or more type rated airplanes or turbine powered rotorcraft. The requirements to report to the PRD will begin in June of 2022. But what's important about the upcoming date of December 7th is that beginning December 8th, AFS 600 will no longer process FA Form 8060-10s for requests for FA records to comply with PREA. So in order to comply with PREA, a hiring air carrier will have to access the PRD to be able to access the FA records for that proposed candidate for their air carrier operation. We'll have more in just a moment. But first, this message from NBAA. NBAA Flight Plan listeners, the latest digital edition of your magazine is ready. Just visit nbaa.org slash insider and all the latest intel will be in your hands. We're back now with the FAA's Rob Record and Brian Kester with NBAA and our conversation regarding the Pilot Records Database, or PRD. Rob, with the deadline for pilots who are required to register with the PRD already passed, what would you say to those who still haven't registered, particularly with December 8th right around the corner? Thanks for the question, Rob. I, I think what's 
absolutely most important is that they go to the website, prd.faa.gov. They get signed up for the PRD. It's as simple as that. There's help on the website in the form of advisory circulars, FAQs, and user guides to assist with accessing the PRD. And there's even help on that website if folks are having issues with identity verification or any of the other processes around establishing a PRD account. And that the AFS 600 team is positioned and prepared to help now. Why is that important to NBAA's membership? The reason why it's important is with an approximate 45% compliance rate across general aviation, we're concerned that after December 7th, we're going to have a significant backlog in folks signing up for the PRD. And we do not want to be any type of bump in the road, if you will, over an air carrier's ability to hire a new pilot. We're actively trying to manage that change and we have that window to manage that change now by encouraging folks to sign up. But again, what we are concerned about is that with the change occurring on December 7th, for those folks that haven't signed up for the PRD, there may be a backlog in us able to assist and provide that access, which could have an effect on the carrier's ability to hire. And that is the last thing we want the PRD to do, which is slow down the, the air carrier's hiring process. There's also checks and balances in place for the pilot whose records are being reported to the PRD. And what I mean by that is that when an air carrier requests information from the PRD on a potential hire or applicant to their company, prior to doing that, the pilot themselves has to establish an account in PRD. They are required to review their records. And there's a process in which that pilot can acknowledge that the records are accurate or that the pilot can dispute the records that are in the PRD. So there is a check and balance process. This isn't a open data exchange. The air carrier, the reporting entities are required to report certain records and that when a pilot applies for employment with an air carrier, that air carrier accesses PRD, but that the pilot is granted that air carrier permission to view their records within the PRD. Thanks for clarifying those points, Rob. I'm sure at least a few of our listeners are concerned about the privacy of their information. And it's also important to emphasize we're in the beginning stages of this transition from what currently can be a rather burdensome and time-consuming paper-based process into an automated system that will be much more streamlined for all parties. Absolutely, Rob. So our AFS 600 teams working diligently with our partners within our internal IT organization in developing a web-based method for reporting pilot records to co coincide with the June 2022 reporting requirements. This will be basically a web-based method that will allow a required reporting entity to be able to upload records and enter records into the PRD as they occur. So as that entity has records, they'll be able to enter them in the PRD, and then those records would instantly be available through the PRD process for the appropriate requesting entity, et cetera. In parallel, we're also developing an API, an application programming interface the API will allow the reporting entity to bulk upload data into the PRD system and will allow the air carrier to do that in a much more efficient manner rather than uploading the data into the system one record at a time. Brian? I think the important thing to note here is that starting December 8th, air carriers will have to start using the PRD to get FAA records. And then starting June 10th, they have to start reporting the new training and checking records to the PRD. However, they're going to have that option earlier than June 10th, it sounds like, because of this API. And it does sound like that'll make things a lot easier for the larger air carriers or the larger organizations that have to report records. So definitely glad to hear that's in the works. <laughs> Thanks for, for getting that together for us, Rob. Yeah, no worries, Brian. And just, just for a little bit of clarity on that, when the June 2022 reporting requirement takes effect, the web-based application reporting will be available on the PRD site. The reason why that was put first from our perspective is that is the system that every operator can use. So it wouldn't matter whether they were a large Part 121 air carrier or a small Part 135 air carrier, they would all be able to access and upload the PRD records. The API interface 
We are planning for the specifications to be able to be released to industry in August of 2022. And that by December, so a few months after, about six months after the web-based interface is available, that the API interface will be available for the bulk upload of records, which will be well within the compliance window for the initial upload of records and the reporting of current training and checking records, as you discussed. And to reiterate, Rob, pilots can go to prd.faa.gov to register for the Pilot Records Database and learn more about the process. Go direct to the website. You can put it into their browser. It'll take you right to the PRD website. On the homepage of PRD, the user can find links to the advisory circular. That's the companion to Part 111. They can find user guides frequently asked questions, and they can find the link to the PRD support help desk. And if I could put a plug in for that as well, our team in AFS 600 is actively monitoring that email inbox. So for anybody that's having any issues with registering for PRD, accessing the system, understanding the FAQs, the user's guides, etc., the email to go direct to is 9-AMC-AVS dash PRD support at FAA.gov. Brian, I know NBAA also has information available about the PRD on its website. Yeah, we've got a guide put together by our regulatory issues advisory group. So a couple of aviation attorneys volunteered to help us put something together. They helped read through the NPRMs, the announcement of the final rule, the advisory circular, the language in the final rule, and put together a guide for folks to understand what the compliance dates are, how this applies to them individually, and what steps they need to take to comply. Uh, It's got information on the registration process and tips for that. So if you haven't registered, it's definitely worth taking a look at. There's some helpful tips in there, like use a personal email rather than a work email address for registration in case you happen to change jobs at some point in your career, that sort of thing. So they can find that at nba.org, or if they have questions, they can always get a hold of NBA via email at ops at nba.org is probably the best way to get a hold of our team. Again, you can learn more about the Pilot Records Database at nbaa.org slash PRIA and at prd.faa.gov. NBAA will continue to follow this process as the PRD moves forward and provide updates to the business aviation community as we approach that June 2022 reporting deadline. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts in the App Store, wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking Alexa or another connected device, or download them from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and be sure to join us next time for a new episode of Flight Plan. Flight Plan.